Hey, what's up guys? This is Anthony from Anthony's Customs, and for this review we are looking at the Marvel Variant Play Arts Kai Venom, which looked really fantastic in all of the pre-production shots and when they finally started showing photos of the figure. And I have to say, short of a few little issues, this figure is almost perfect. I love this figure. So right off the bat, you know I'm going to recommend it, but let's take a look at it anyway. He stands roughly about 26 centimeters to the top of his noggin, which makes it about, eh, about 10 and a quarter, 10 inches, right around there. And a lot of people were worried that he's too short. He's shorter than Spider-Man. Well, let's see. Is he shorter than Spider-Man? No, they're almost exactly, of course you have to count how their heads are posed, but they're almost exactly the same size. Their feet are the same distance apart. They're almost the exact same size. So, he's not actually shorter. Should he be a little bit taller? Probably, but he's at least the same size and a heck of a lot thicker. So I'm okay with it. I think it would be better if he was bigger, but it's certainly not a problem. So that's a good thing. Let's look at the accessories real quick. He comes with the standard Player Arts Kai display stage, but I don't have to show you that. He has an interchangeable head. This is the regular head, obviously. Love the sculpt, by the way. I think they absolutely nailed the look for Venom. It looks just like the classic Venom, and it looks like a new version of him. I think it's fantastic, and I'm not a huge Venom fan, I mean I like the character, but I'm not fanboying, I just think they really, really nailed it. And we have an alternate head with the open mouth, so the eyes are basically the same, a little bit more lip going on there, but the head's about the same as the regular one, but we have a hinged jaw, which is fantastic that they included that. Doesn't provide much range of motion, but it is there and the tongue can be posed. It can technically be removed, but you probably don't want to do that unless you really want to just give him an underbite, which can work, but it's up to you. Having, I think having the posable tongue and the jaw that, uh, that swings down, really nice touch. They did a really good job with that. He has two interchangeable normal hands, so we have the standard hand right there and a fist hand, of course. This time he actually came with these on him and the fist hands were accessories, but it's all the same, doesn't matter how they're coming in the packaging. So we have those four hands, then we have three other hands. So we have this one, which is a tendril shooting hand. It's kind of coming out of that spot right there. It's supposed to look like the white pad he had in the, uh, like the 90s animated series, if you guys remember that. By the way, this does look very much like that build, which I think is one of the reasons I love it so much. Very much like the Lethal Protector style Venom. But here's the tendril hand, one of them. Very cool little accessory, you can kind of put that on the ground, you'll see in the photos at the end. Then we have this one which is a little bit more of a grippy hand, the tendril's a little bit more woven around his fingers. So that's the left hand, this one was a left hand also. And then we have one right hand which is almost like a gripping hand, which I think would be cool to pose him with Spider-Man. You know, kind of having him hold him by the neck or the head or something, I don't know. But you could come up with your own poses for that. But So we have three of the tendril hands also. That's it for accessories, so it's not a whole bunch, but I think it's enough. And we do get a heck of a lot of figure here, even though we do have the hollow chest like we've been known to have. Still a whole lot of solidness in a very sturdy figure. So, uh, paint-wise, I love the way they did the shading with the purple. There's some of it like on these blackish-blue parts, and then some of it on the silver spider logo. It's just really mixed in throughout, subtly, but appropriately. I like it a lot. It's very, very nice. And then having the silver for the spider logo works wonderfully. And then the bodysuit itself is a mix of blues and grays and blacks. And you can kind of see here we have the more gray. There's some gray around the bicep. It's just mixed in throughout. And it gives the character a really, really nice composition. And the armor having the webbing on it kind of like Spider-Man's. Very nice also. They put a lot of, maybe the designers just really like Venom, I don't know, but this figure shows a lot of care went into it and I, I like it. If you guys saw my unboxing video, you noticed that this was all mushed out of place and not quite right, so I just spent some time with the hair dryer, I heated it up real well, and I just held it where it needed to go and let it cool, and now it's perfectly fine. I did undo, the, this part is supposed to be glued inside to the, uh, plastic core of the body. I undid that glue just so that it could move around a little bit better while I was working with it. You guys probably won't even have to deal with it since it was probably just a fluke, but if you need to, just know heating it with a hair dryer will get it back into shape and now it looks just fine. As far as the articulation goes, I can just pop the head off to show you since it's an interchangeable head. We actually have a hinged ball peg for the top part of the head rather than a double jointed ball peg. 
I still prefer the double jointed ball peg, a double ball peg, it, whatever you want to call it. The hinge works okay for Venom, but a uh, double ball peg would have also, let's see if I can get the head back on now. It's a little stiffer than I would have liked for an interchangeable head, but there we go. So you can get the head all the way back on the neck if you want to and make him look up, but it does give him kind of this weird chin issue. So I would leave the peg forward and just pose the head on there, but you do get good range nonetheless. And the neck itself is on a peg that's a hinged peg, really. It's not a ball peg, so it only can swivel and then use the hinge. Now, he has the same issue as some of the other figures. When you lean the head forward, or when you lean the neck forward, you end up with a big gap. So it's just, it doesn't work quite as well as I think they envisioned it, so I'm not quite a big fan of that. But I do like, though, that the uh, traps do stick up nice and high. It gives him that really linebacker-y look. It is unfortunate that he's hollow. You can kind of see through sometimes but that does allow for better posability. He has these nice big shoulders and you still get nice range of motion. They go all the way up and we have the uh, ball hinge here so we can use the butterfly part of it if we want to bring the arm around, which works really well. Very nice posability on this guy and his gapping isn't nearly as bad as Thor's, so that's really nice. You can't see in there at all. You get the uh, hinge for the ball hinge itself and then you can also rotate the shoulder around that peg and you can rotate the bicep around as well. So really good posability on this guy. The standard hinged elbow gives him a really good range of motion. He's a little bit of that spur on his elbow, which actually works. Thor has it because it's supposed to look like an elbow. He has it because it's supposed to look like Venom and it works better and it's not nearly as gappy as Thor's. So it looks really good and it's more excusable on Venom anyway. Still a little bit gappy, but not too bad. So I'm all right with that. Plus, I love the fact that you can bring his arm all the way across if you wanted to. Just really nice posability. So that leads me into this part. We do have a split here in the chest, so you can just mush this around and get the arm wherever you want it. He does have this problem. Now the good thing is you don't have to worry about it because unless you try to pull the chest all the way back, you're not going to have to worry about that gap. You can see here that's the hinge right there with the ball peg in the bottom. So the ball peg does give you really good range of motion, so if you want to pull him all the way forward, use that hinge and then pull him forward. Uh, but I personally, I would just leave that hinge down like this and then pull him forward like that. You don't have any gapping when you go all the way back or all the way forward, except back here, which still, it is a problem. Luckily, it's only on the back this time. It's not nearly as bad as some of the other figures, but I really think they need to fix that. Uh, you can ignore it because as long as you don't look at him from the back, it's okay. So I'm being a little more forgiving because the figure is so good otherwise and we don't have gapping anywhere other than when we lean him either all the way forward or all the way back, which you don't need to do and you can still snap that down and lean him back pretty far. So it's definitely a problem, but it's not a, uh, a crucial one or a fatal one. We have the standard single ball peg for the lower torso so you can move that body around really quite far in any direction you want to. Forward and back's pretty good, side to side, full swivel, no problem at all. This floating crotch piece does a nice job of hiding all the joints and not looking like a diaper. I think they did a good job with it. For the hips, we can bring the legs all the way forward, no problem at all. As far as going to the side, they are a little bit limited. Um, it's, it's unfortunate that the more flexible characters are limited, but I think for Venom anyway, it's not as necessary as Spider-Man, so I can let it slide a little bit more, but it should definitely have better range of motion there. Our thigh swivel is actually just a cut joint or a standard swivel in the thigh with this kind of hiding it, but it works out well enough. Double jointed knees have really nice range of motion and they're not particularly ugly, so I'm okay with that. And then for the ankles, we have really good range of motion in the ball hinge. You can swivel it all the way around and give yourself an ankle rocker. You can see the plastic here is nice and soft. Or you can just rotate the foot around on the peg and you get a nice toe hinge in this guy, which is really good. So other than the hips not being able to do the splits and the uh, um, hinge in the torso making some gaps, it's almost perfect. It's a really, really nice Venom. I love the silhouette or whatever you want, not silhouette, yeah, silhouette. Uh, I think they just did a great job with the anatomy and the general look for Venom, so I recommend this 100%. Stick around for some photos here at the end, and make sure you subscribe to the channel so you can see my upcoming figure reviews, custom figures, and other good stuff. And in the meantime, keep collecting.